After watching this video, you're going to be an expert at how to care for a leopard gecko on a beginner's level. If you've never owned a pet reptile before and this is your first pet reptile, this is the video for you. So we're going to cover this on our five topics. We've got the information of the species, absolutely everything about the species really quickly so that you can better learn how they live in the wild to better care for them in captivity. We're going to talk about their enclosure size, absolutely everything you need to know about enclosure sizes from babies all the way up to adulthood, what you need to add into that enclosure, how you need to set that enclosure up. That's all coming up. We're going to talk through the heating. There is so many different ways of heating an enclosure. So many people say do it this way. So many people say do it that way. I'm going to talk you through all of them and which one's best for you as a beginner. You've got the lighting. Well, do leopard geckos actually do require ultraviolet lighting? Do they require visible lighting? We're going to talk through all of that. Then we're going to move over to the big one, the diet. What is the best diet for baby leopard geckos all the way up to adult leopard geckos? Because the diet does change depending on their age. Now this video is going to be quite long, so I do apologize for that, but it's going to be jam packed full of loads of information that you're going to require through the entire life of your leopard gecko. I'm always curious to know what names we actually give to our leopard geckos. I mean, I've got Mac down there and I've got Millie in the big bioactive enclosure in the living room. What names do you call yours? Leave them in the comment section down below. And while you're there, let me know how old they are as well. I am always fascinated by all that sort of stuff. Leopard geckos come from Afghanistan, Pakistan, that sort of regions. They have such a wide area that they do actually originate from. They could come from quite humid, foresty scrublands all the way over to the, the deadlands where there's nothing, no water, no moisture, no plant growth. They have such a wide area that they can live in. In the wild, they tend to live for around about eight to 10 years. However, in captivity, they're known to live anywhere from 12 to 15 years. And that's simply because in captivity, we can provide them with a much more healthier, much more enriched diet. Because in the wild, they just sort of, they, only, they can only eat the bugs when the bugs are available to be eaten because the bugs go through a life cycle. Sometimes, the right bugs are not always there. Also in captivity, they don't have any natural disasters, they don't have sandstorms, they don't have floods, they don't have anything like that in captivity, which means they live a longer life. But around about 12 to 15 years is a sort of average lifespan for a leopard gecko in captivity. They're a crepuscular species. What does that mean? That means they're most active dawn and dusk and through the night. So you'll never actually see your leopard gecko through the day out and about here and there. You might catch the old glimpse here and there, but most of the time, nine times out of ten, it's going to be tucked away in his hide. But in the wild, they live a matriarchal society. What does that mean? It means they've got an alpha male and a matriarch female, the, the top of the top. And underneath them two, they've got a whole array of others. Every now and then, you might get a male that reaches maturity, that wants to become the alpha. And you do get a lot of bickering, a lot of fighting between the two males, to the point where it's, it's said that the male that loses that battle will offer up his tail to the winning male, and the male will eat it and store all that fat and be big and fat and proud. That's the sort of thing we don't want in captivity. So they may live in groups and societies in the wild. In captivity, it is better to have them separate, have them just one at a time. That way you don't get any competition over food, you don't get any bickering, any fighting, any arguing, you don't get these submissive and the dominant sorts of females, you just get no problems like that, which again, aids in them living that little bit longer in captivity. A leopard gecko will drop his tail, and that's a distinctive feature that they do. In the wild, in their, their sort of hunting mode, they're going along, but their tail is up in the air and it's swooping like this. If a bird flies over and sees that and thinks, oh, that's yummy, a bird will go down, grab that tail, pick that animal up, that the leopard gecko has the ability to drop that tail so the leopard gecko can fall to the ground, run and scurry off and go and hide somewhere until his tail starts to actually heal again. His tail will regrow, but it will never be exactly the same as a normal leopard gecko. It will just be a bull tail. It's impossible to sex a baby leopard gecko until they sort of start to reach maturity. Around about six to sort of eight months old, you can start to find out. We have done a video on how to sex a leopard gecko. If you want to see that video, I'll leave it just up there. But if you've got your leopard gecko from a reputable breeder, they will be able to tell you near enough 99% of the chance that what that sex of the animal actually is. It's not 100% certain, but they can tell. How do they know? Temperature sexed. You can incubate the leopard gecko eggs at certain temperatures to get either females, a mixture, some of the eggs might be male or female, or just males, depending on the temperature those eggs are incubated at. 
let's go over to the enclosure size for your leopard geckos. Now for a baby, I like to keep the enclosures fairly small. I'm talking newborn babies from eggs to around about four months old is about a nine litre rug, just a little tub that fits them perfectly. You can fit a couple of hides in there, a little bit of decor, a paper bedding, and it just keeps it nice, clean, secure. You can keep an eye on that animal, make sure he's doing really, really well. On the flip side to that, he does like to be able to find his food. So if you're just dropping some crickets in there, he needs to be able to find the, those crickets, have the space where the crickets can't just go all over the place in a big 10 foot enclosure and your leopard gecko sat there going, I'm a little bit hungry, but I can't find it. So keeping it nice and small and really sterilistical clean, then that's the best way for a baby leopard gecko. However, leopard geckos that are a little bit older, you need to go for a little bit bigger. Now the biggest I would go is two foot enclosure, for a sub-adult. That's the biggest I would go for a sub-adult because then again, they can try and find their food and stuff like that. If you're going for an adult, that enclosure down there is a three foot wide enclosure. I think it's around about 36 inches wide and that is perfect for an adult leopard gecko. If you wanted to go for a bigger one, all power, great, nice one. My big bioactive enclosure, that's a four foot enclosure and it's two foot deep and two foot tall. The same as this one here, this is an 18 inch tall, 18 inch deep, three foot long enclosure. Now why does it have to be so big? What do you have to do? Well on these enclosures you need one side of the enclosure is the hot side, one side of the enclosure is a cold side. Why do we need to do that? These animals, the reptiles, they're cold blooded, they thermoregulate, what does that mean? Like us, you, me, humans, mammals, we can regulate our own body temperature within ourselves to determine like if we're a little bit cold our body will warm us up a reptile can't do that so if a reptile gets a little bit cold he goes over to the hot side if he gets a little bit too hot he'll come back over the cold side that's how they find the most comfortable temperature reptiles need a good basking spot a good heat source to be able to digest their food the heat activates their stomach acid basically digesting their food. If you've got the wrong heat over that side, it's not gonna digest the food. Then you're gonna start hitting health problems within your animal. Same for loose substrates as well. If you use a loose substrate and you've not got the correct heat source over there, you're gonna run into a lot more problems as well. We'll run over the heat a little bit more in detail in the next point. The absolute minimum that you require inside these enclosures is on the hot side, you need to have a hot hide. A hide that's at the exact perfect temperature for these leopard geckos. Around the middle area, you could do with something like a moist hide. Now the moist hide, what is that? That's a hide that's either full of uh, coca fiber, sphagnum moss, something that's just a lot more humid inside that hide. Why do they need that? They go in there and it helps them shed. Reptiles, like us, our skin stretches. Reptiles don't do that. All reptiles don't do that. So go inside the moist hide and basically helps them take off their skin. They just lose the entire skin. Now with a leopard gecko, you might not actually see that shed. You might not see the shed in process because they like to ingest it. That old skin is packed full of nutrients and they do like to eat it as they're shedding it off. It is extremely important that they do shed this skin off. It, that skin doesn't stretch. So as they're growing, it could restrict various areas of their body, restricting blood flow, which means those items of body will actually fall off. So the one to check is the tips of the toes. That's the most common area it gets stuck. You don't want to lose toes. The tip of the tail and across the round the face, the nose, the nostrils, that, those sorts of areas. If you do find that your leopard gecko does have a problem shedding or you want to help him shed, I'll leave a video up there explaining how to do it. And then over the cold side, you want a cold hide as well. If you can fit a few more extra hides in there to give them a bit of option on where they actually want to go, even better. All the items that we are mentioning throughout this video will be linked in the description down below. But now it's time to get onto the heating and the specifics behind the heating. The most common source of heating a leopard gecko for new leopard gecko owners is a heating mat, just a standard heating mat, just like this. This one here is what I would consider to be the best on the market right now, and it's the Reptile Systems heating uh, pad. The, why is it the best? It's not because it just heats up in one little place. It heats up the majority in the middle and then slowly fades out to slightly cooler temperatures. So the animal can find its best, heat, it's the, the best temperature for it, really. A heating mat must always be coupled up with a thermostat. Again, this is the Reptile Systems thermostat. There are other brands out there on the market. Now, what do these do? These keep your heating product at the correct temperature. So it, when the heating mat gets up to the right temperature, 
the thermostat will turn that off and basically make it sure it doesn't get any hotter. But then if it gets a bit cooler, the thermostat will then turn it back on again. There's a load of different styles of thermostats, uh, from on-off thermostats, pulse proportional thermostats, uh, dimming thermostats. They all have their own separate use. If you want to see a video dedicated to thermostats, I'll leave one linked just up there. But how do you set this up? The Reptile Systems heating pads have got the sticky back, so you just peel that off and put that down on the hot side of the enclosure. Your thermostat has got a probe built into it, just there. That gets put on top of the heating mat. I don't like to use any sticky tape or glue or anything with when I am doing it this method. Instead, I put the probe down on top of the heating mat and then I put a hide on top of the probe to keep it in place nice and secure. That's it, set the temperature on there to 92 degrees Fahrenheit and that will keep your heating pad at 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Another way you can do it is with one of these, a ceramic heat emitter. This emits heat, but no light. You have to keep in mind, these animals are because pustulan species. So if you add light into their enclosure on the heat source throughout the night, it's gonna disrupt a day and night routine. So uh, a ceramic heat emitter, no light, just heat. Again, another great option. You attach this into the enclosure on the hot side using a ceramic bracket. So this bulb, fits into that hole there, it points down onto the hot side, again, rigged up to a thermostat, where the thermostat probe is either just underneath this, or on the side wall or something like that, allow it to settle in for a few days, constantly keep checking the temperature under there before adding your leopard gecko in to make sure that temperature is absolutely perfect and doesn't get too hot. The most modern, the most scientifically proven and technologically advanced way of doing it is with one of these, an infrared heat projector. This is the Mega Ray version, which is the version that I recommend. Again, it will be linked down in the description down below. What is it? It's this. Again, it emits heat, infrared heat, and no light. These actually do emit a tiny, tiny amount of light, but it's hardly visible, so it's not really a problem. These emit the infrared wavelengths are the correct wavelength that they would naturally see in the wild, making their enclosure just a little bit more closer to nature than what they would actually see in the wild. These, I highly recommend these. These are, they are absolutely amazing. These work best with a dimming thermostat or a pulse proportional thermostat. I personally use them with a dimming thermostat. I've got these in all of my boa constrictor enclosures, my leopard gecko enclosures, my royal python enclosure. They're absolutely amazing. These are the way forward in the reptile hobby. There are a few other brands that make similar ones, but these are the OGs. These are the ones that have been made for the last 20 odd years. These are the ones that pioneered this design. And that's that. That is how you heat up your enclosure, keeping it on one side of the enclosure and a cool side on the cool side of the enclosure, making, making it sure you've got your hot side this side and your temperature is slowly, gradually going down to the cold side. Let's move over to lighting of your enclosures. This is a big debated topic when it comes to leopard geckos. The general consensus is, yes, they can live perfectly fine without UV lighting. The modern way of looking at it is they do actually highly benefit from ultraviolet lighting, UVI lighting, UVB lighting. It's all the same. The ones that I go for are the reptile systems zones system. What does that actually mean? Leopard geckos naturally fall on Ferguson zone one, what is Ferguson Zone 1? That is a graph between Ferguson Zone 1 and Ferguson Zone 4. All the reptiles fit into that graph somewhere, depending on how much UV light they are actually able to achieve from the wild. Where, what kind of light would they get from the wild? That sort of thing. So I like to use the Ferguson Zone 1, the Eco T5 unit from Reptile Systems. This comes complete the unit, the lamp that you're gonna need, the Ferguson Zone 1 lamp, the cables, the wiring, the fittings, the fixing instructions, everything comes in this one unit. So it's just a simple case of plug it into your enclosure, turn it on. It's got all the instructions on the back of the box there so that 30 centimeters away from the actual animal, you're gonna achieve a UVI of 1.8 with this unit, which is absolutely perfect for that animal. I regularly do see my animal coming out and basking and absorbing all the UV light that comes off these lamps. Now leopard geckos, 
do need a varied diet. That is the very best diet that you could possibly give to your animal is a varied diet. Could be superworms, mealworms, dubia roaches, crickets, locusts, silkworms. There's so many different items of food that you can give to your leopard gecko. Each individual food item has a different boundary with inside it. Some have more protein, some have more fat, some have more moisture inside them. They all have a different makeup inside the actual live food themselves. But for me, for a baby, I like to go for the higher protein animals. So your crickets, your locusts, and your mealworms are absolutely perfect for babies. When they grow a little bit older, I just feed them everything. Just a massive mixture. I'm lucky here at Northern Exotics, we breed all of our own live food. Everything from dubia roaches, crickets, mealworms, we breed them all. We have done a load of videos, so if you are interested in finding out what you want to breed yourselves, click on the playlist just up there, you're bound to find something that you want yourself. All the live food that you feed to your leopard gecko, doesn't matter whether your leopard gecko is a baby or a full grown adult, needs to have a supplement dusted over the top of it. Calcium is the biggest supplement. Now, this is where we go back to the lighting. If you supply UV lighting to your leopard gecko, use calcium. If you do not supply UV lighting, use calcium with vitamin D3. The UV lighting helps your leopard gecko actually produce its own vitamin D3. So you don't need added vitamin D3 if you use a UV light. The powders I like to use, all of my animals have got UV lighting. So I just use standard calcium ultra. It's a reptile systems brand and I've also got vitamin as well. I alternate it from day to day. Vitamin is just full and packed full of all the natural minerals that the animals are not gonna get in captivity. Let me explain that one just a little bit further. The insects that would naturally be eaten in the wild live differently in the wild, so they have a load of minerals built into those insects, whereas the ones that we feed in captivity don't have those vitamins and minerals. So it's always worth going vitamin and calcium. Again, if you're not using UVB lighting, make sure you've got calcium with vitamin D3. They also do one called insect food. That's a mind blowing formula to gut load your feeder insects to make sure your feeder insects are extremely healthy when you feed them to your leopard gecko. That's the a la carte range by Reptile Systems. A couple of last little bits to sort of brush up on. Humidity, try and keep the humidity between sort of 35 and 45% humidity. That'll be absolutely perfect. If you find your humidity is a little bit too high, there's loads of different ways how you can actually reduce the humidity inside the enclosures. I'll leave a video up there to help you out there. Another one, water dish. Always make sure there is a fresh supply of water constantly. Where you put the water bowl is very important. Don't put it near the hot side of the enclosure because it's going to evaporate, causing humidity inside the enclosure. Make sure it's over the cold side or somewhere near the middle. Middle to sort of cold side, absolutely perfect. My name's Richard, this channel's called Northern Exotics and you've just learned how to care for a leopard gecko.